In that world, there are many fathers who do not care about their children. They don't talk to them and they don't care what they do. Children in that case do not have a state of psychological instability. They're in a weak state and need someone to be with them always. The children who are not cared for by their father will have severe emotional imbalance. They don't know how to deal with people properly. They need someone to make up for their father's absence. Therefore, parents should be keen to always stay with their children and always talk to them so that they feel internal psychological stability, and then they don't need other people. It's more difficult when the reason for this is the father and that he has a daughter and he never talks to her. She feels emotionally inferior. She's looking for someone to make up for it. She just wants to feel loved, to hear sweet words, for someone to care and talk to her because she never received those feelings from her father. There are girls who are in a hurry to choose the wrong person to be with in a relationship or marriage in order to compensate for the love and attention they didn't find at home. This is a big mistake and makes them vulnerable because they agree to whatever that person wants, whom they think he loves them. And this is dangerous. Rushing to choose a life partner is dangerous. Every girl should know very well that this person will be her partner in everything. He'll be the father of her children. He'll be the person who must be with her for the rest of her life. For all the above, every girl must choose her life partner carefully. The story begins with a very tragic scene. Jane was in her class. She's only 16, and she saw a father coming to class to take his daughter. He laughs with his daughter, pampers her, and treats her with love. Jane was very touched by this scene because she didn't find this. Jane lives with her father and mother, but she didn't find that warmth and tenderness from her father. Her father, George, works as an accountant in a company. He stays outside the house all the time, goes out with his friends, or does anything else. He doesn't care about his daughter, Jane, and rarely talks to her. He thinks that the mother is the one who raises and does everything, and this is a completely wrong thinking. Jane has a psychological complex and a severe lack of her personality. She's always impulsive and tries to be a social person and get to know all the people in order to feel love. She's looking for love in people. As for her mother, her mother loves her very much and cares for her. One night, Jane felt awful tired. She had the flu. Jane and her friend went to a doctor for an examination. Jane went to the doctor, and when she saw him for the first time, she liked him very much. They had a nice conversation, and that ended with Jane taking the doctor's number in order to call him at another time. The doctor's name is Peter, and he's 26 years old. Peter has two opposite personalities. He's a very skilled doctor, and he's very superior. At the same time, he's a hypocritical man. He takes drugs, drinks alcohol, and loves girls who are younger than him. Two days passed, and Jane called Dr. Peter because she wanted to come to him to check on her again. She went to his clinic, and there was no one in the clinic. He checked her and made sure she was fine. Peter kept talking to her on many topics and talked to her that he wanted to marry a beautiful girl like her, and that age really didn't mean anything to him. He made it clear to her that he cares about the inner essence of man more than anything else. And as we know, he's a liar. He just does it in order to control Jane's feelings. And then she submits to him and does whatever he wants. He has bad intentions towards her. Then he asked her to date and she agreed. They dated and it was a very wonderful day for Jane because that day she received feelings of love and romantic words. Dr. Peter managed to fool Jane. He then asked her to have an affair, but she refused, telling him, we're not in love, so I can do this with you. We're still friends. He said to her, we're not friends. I love you, Jane. Jane felt like she was over the moon when he told her so. She felt that this doctor had come to make up for the loss of her father, who is alive but never talks to her. Then she said to him, I feel very attracted to you. Do you really love me? I want us to get married and live together. I don't want a temporary relationship. Jane is afraid that Peter's presence is temporary in her life. She wants someone who will always care and love for her. He replied, I do love you so much. I told you before that I like you, but I also told you that I don't care about the age difference between us. I want to get married too. Tell your family that and I'd do anything to marry you. I'm here for you, Jane. Jane felt so happy that day. After that, she returned to her home and found her father, as usual, not at home. Mother Sophia noticed that her daughter Jane was very happy and said to her, You look very beautiful when you're happy. I want to see you always happy, my sweet. I'm so glad I found the right person, said Jane. What do you mean by that? The mother marveled. Jane replied, There's a doctor named Peter who wants to marry me. He loves me very much and I love him too. But you're still young. How old is that doctor? Said the mother. Jane replied, He's 26. He's confessed to me that he loves me and wants to marry me. Hmm. Okay, but let me think about that. I should know more about him. Jane replied, 
Mom, I told you that he's a successful doctor. Of course, he's a kind and respectful person. I also confirmed that through his kind words to me. The mother said, Don't let people's appearances deceive you, Jane. Sophia talked to her husband about their daughter's marriage, but surprisingly, he agreed to that marriage as soon as he knew that the person who would marry his daughter was a doctor. There are people who believe that external appearances, jobs, etc., determine the character of a person and make him good. There are people who like to be deceived by appearances and names that, in fact, have no value. People and things don't really look what they seem to us. The girl urged her mother to agree to the marriage, and in the end, the mother agreed, even though she didn't feel comfortable with that doctor. In the end, the doctor, Peter, and Jane got married, and their wedding was so wonderful. At first, life between them began to go on, normal form, but then Peter showed his true face to her. Peter gets very late at work, and she always calls him, and he doesn't answer. After that, he comes home and lies to her, saying, I'm a doctor, and it's normal if I have a lot of work. Please don't call me too much. In fact, doctor goes to the bar after work to drink alcohol and do drugs. Peter married Jane because he wants a beautiful young girl, not because he loved her. He also wants to go home and find food prepared for him and find all his clothes clean. And of course, Jane does all that. So Peter married her. He doesn't love her. He just loves her body and what she does for him. Jane didn't complain to her mother so as to not be embarrassed, especially since her mother initially refused that marriage and warned her about that person. But it was Jane who insisted on marrying him. Then Jane noticed that Peter was late for her several times, and Jane decided to keep an eye on him because she suspected he was doing something without her knowledge. Jane then found out that he was taking drugs. Peter came home and found Jane very angry. She told him, You're a skilled liar. You lie to me and tell me you're at work while you do drugs. You're the most hypocritical man I've ever seen. He replied, How can you keep an eye on me? Then he slapped her in the face, and unfortunately that day he took more drugs and he doesn't feel what he's doing. Unfortunately, the monster killed that innocent girl. He grabbed her neck and strangled her. That innocent girl died. When Peter woke up to find his wife dead on the floor, he was shocked and had a panic attack. He's afraid of being arrested. He called her mother. Save me. I came back from work and found your daughter lying on the ground dead. He pretended to be crying. After that, the mother came crying and screaming. She was shocked because her daughter was not suffering from any diseases. She wanted her daughter's body to be taken to the morgue to learn how she died. Peter explained to her that the body didn't need to be taken to the mortuary and that it had been buried. She suspected that Peter had killed her daughter. She did a trick on him and told him that the body would not be going to the mortuary and that they would bury it in the morning. But she took the body to the mortuary to find out who killed her. After that, the mother installed a surveillance camera in the daughter's coffin to know what would happen. But she was very shocked when she saw in the camera that Peter came to the grave and set it on fire, thinking that Jane's body was in it, in order to burn the body and not be taken by anyone, because if they took her to the mortuary, they'd know that he was the culprit. She took the video and went to the police, and he was arrested and severely punished. The mother lived in great sadness after the loss of her daughter. The father regretted everything that happened and that he was never with his daughter. He deeply regretted it and lived all his life in regret and heartbreak, believing that he was the cause of his daughter's death.